Well, First Minister, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege to be invited to address you, and I very much welcome this opportunity to tell you about the Green Investment Bank, our progress, our plans, and, and some of our ambitions. I've been in office for a few months now, and our work so far has involved getting the organisation ready for the launch of a truly groundbreaking institution once state aid approval comes through from the European Commission, and we're all looking forward to the challenge ahead. At the outset, I want to impress on you the fact that we have, beyond all else, two jobs to invest in projects which have a green impact and to make a commercial return on doing so. Now, there are a lot of views out there about why the green economy might not attract the type and level of investment that should or could do. Some of them are myths presented as fact, some possess a degree of reality. One of my aims, and that of the team here from whom you're going to hear later on, is to dispel the myths and to help to turn the challenges into opportunities, real, viable, commercial opportunities. We're fortunate in the UK to have knowledgeable and sophisticated green investors and developers, and we're going to work with them and indeed international partners, including sovereign wealth funds, to find projects to deliver on our two jobs. Legislation is currently progressing through Parliament, which will set our formal remit, a bank with a green purpose, investing in the UK's green infrastructure. That legislation will also facilitate our independence. Incidentally, I was with uh, Vince Cable the other day, and I stressed the importance of this independence that he put his head in his hands. It was some time later before he cheered up a bit. He, he thought he was talking about Scottish independence. Once again, granted state air approval from the Commission, we will be able to operate very much at arm's length from ministers, an investment bank making loans and investments in the expectation of earning a return and reinvesting the proceeds back into the green economy. And I'm confident of our ability to meet this challenge. As set by government, the initial five strategic priorities over the next three years will be offshore wind power generation, waste process and recycling, energy from waste generation, non-domestic energy efficiency, and support for the Green Deal. Now, I'm fully aware that there will be disappointment among some in the audience that these priorities do not include wave and tidal technologies. These technologies are still some way off being fully commercial and would not satisfy our investment criteria. But experience has shown that technology can develop at real pace, and once these technologies have become more commercial, they may well be priority sectors for the UK Green Investment Bank in the future. But I, I want to make this clear. This cannot and will not be a bank just for large projects. £180 million has already been committed to four fund managers, two specially in waste and two in non-domestic energy efficiency, with the funds being targeted at smaller projects. The current environment is quite confusing. I am reminded of Boris Yeltsin when he was President of Russia. And they asked him if he could sum up the state of the Russian economy in one word. And he said, good. And they said, if you had two words, not good. <laughs> the UK, let's tackle the not so good first. The UK faces huge challenges to finance its environmental objectives. To meet the targets of 23-27 carbon budget, it needs to increase its emissions reductions from the current 1% per annum to 3% and a further increase to 4.5% beyond 2025 will also be required. Looking at electricity generation, the contribution of renewables needs to rise from 11% today to 30% by 2020. And from my perspective as the chair of SSE, I can assure you that is a significant challenge. Offshore wind alone is projected to require investment of £50 billion up to 2021, and that's barely eight years away. But with these challenges come tremendous opportunities. With the global low carbon and environmental goods and services sector projected to reach four trillion pounds in 2015-16, there's huge potential for innovative low carbon businesses to lead the way and capitalize on the global opportunities on offer. However, it's clear that lack of sufficient finance is acting as a barrier to the build out of green infrastructure, as you've just heard. I have a very clear vision for the UK Green Investment Bank. I firmly believe the bank will play a key role in supporting the development of green infrastructure. And while the bank will have an unreservedly green focus, there will be other ways in which we can benefit the economy. For example, it will create new opportunities for small and medium-sized enterprises in areas 
in the provision of, for example, research, specialist services and supply chain. We should be in no doubt the UK Green Investment Bank has a potential to be a game-changing institution, accelerating UK transition to the green economy, and I am fully committed to its success. I see the UK Green Investment Bank as an institution not just for the next three years, but for the next generation and beyond as we move towards these challenging goals. I am confident we will achieve these goals through our actions and efforts. We are going to work to help to identify green projects which, which can deliver real commercial returns, stimulate creativity in how we structure it and approach investment in the green economy, encourage cooperation and collaboration between our prospective partners and other investors, and very crucially, build confidence, which is lacking right now, in the market for green investment. Now, clearly, we can't do this alone. I'm immensely proud of the team we're building here, all of them bringing expertise, experience and passion to deliver the mission. And incidentally, we've attracted some very impressive people to this team. I've spent a lifetime in finance, investment and so on, and this is among some of the best people I've worked with. Even they, however, don't have a monopoly in wisdom, and we're going to seek partnership, collaboration and counsel from others across the industry. Not only will we invest, but we're going to be a centre of knowledge and a conduit to help bring key players together. Let me give you an update of where, what we're up to. The recruitment process for the senior executive team is underway. We've appointed the chief executive, Sean Kingsbury. Sean joins us from a private equity firm, Hudson Clean Energy Partners, where he was responsible for its European activities. He brings a strong track record of leadership in private equity and low carbon finance, and he has a big background in energy generally. We're delighted to have him on board, and I look forward to working closely with Sean and his new team as they begin delivery of our strategy as we seek to develop and create opportunities in key sectors. I'm also pleased we've now appointed a team of non-executive directors. And incidentally, the calibre of these is also very high. One example is the chief executive uh, of Standard Life, whose background is also having been a finance director in Scottish Power. That's the sort of individual we brought on board. And each of these individuals is bringing a wealth of experience and a depth of knowledge from which we will benefit enormously. The headquarters of the bank are here in Edinburgh. In Edinburgh, we're going to have all our support staff HR, PR, IT, finance, risk, asset management. Most of our transacting teams are going to be in London, but we will have some transacting capability here in Edinburgh and in Scotland. And how could it be otherwise when Scotland has 25% of European wind potential and 25% of tide potential and 10% of wave potential around these shores? This is going to enable us to play to the strengths of both Edinburgh and London, supporting our ambitions for the bank to be a world leader. We have already selected premises in Edinburgh and London, and we are taking forward myriad of decisions relating to set-up, including IT, staffing and other operational matters. Finally, we will require the approval of the European Commission before we begin operating as an independent financial institution. The Department for Business, Innovation and Skills is leading negotiations with the Commission and I am assured that we are on track for an imminent decision. I am told that that could come before the end of this month. Now, given we are gathered in Scotland, I thought it would be important to touch briefly on some of the important activity we have been engaged in right here. The Scottish Government has identified a large pipeline of potential low carbon projects. Many of these fall within the UK Green Investment Bank's scope and some will not. The UK Green Investment Bank will be only one of a number of sources of funding for these projects. The First Minister announced yesterday the creation of the Renewables Infrastructure Fund, and that will provide another additional source of funding. I am delighted we have agreed with the Scottish Government to resource jointly a review of this pipeline to develop recommendations on how these projects might be taken forward, together with the potential sources of funding available to them. Now, there is understandably, understandably a great deal of interest in the level of funding for the bank. The bank has been funded with £3 billion up to 2015. We should not underestimate the challenge of a new institution deploying this level of capital sensibly, especially if the European Commission places tight controls on what the bank can and cannot do. From initial market testing, we feel confident about committing £3 billion by 2015, but it would be unrealistic to think the bank could commit tens of billions from the outset. 
crowding in private sector capital is central to our remit. We will focus not only on investing $3 billion in projects which demonstrate ability to make a positive commercial return and a green impact, but also on mobilising additional capital into a wide range of green infrastructure. This will not be an institution which gives out grants or soft loans. We will build a credible commercial entity working towards a double bottom line of achieving significant green impact and appropriate risk-adjusted returns. We will never crowd out the private capital. And let me tell you this, if in three years' time our biggest concern is if and how much we can borrow because we need to meet demand for fantastic projects, I will be really delighted. I wanted to make mention of our forerunner, UK Green Investments. In one important respect, we are actually taking on a baton rather than making a standing start. I knew the know-how had developed from the Commonwealth Games would come in handy at some point. At the end of last year, the Government set up UK Green Investments team to make investments in green infrastructure and commercial terms. These initial Government investments will transfer into UK Green Investment Bank once we are operational. UK GI team now numbers over 30 professionals drawn from a broad spectrum of financial and commercial backgrounds and indicated earlier, I think, are some of the very best people in the business. It's engaged actively with the market over the last year to understand investment challenges and opportunities in the various priority sectors. They've developed an exciting pipeline of investment opportunities, a number of which are near to financial close. And as I've mentioned already, following two open competitions, the UK GI team has already committed £180 million to the four fund managers for investment in smaller projects with values of less than £30 million. And thanks to the work of UK GI team, the bank will be able to hit the ground running once it begins operation. Well, very finally, I have no doubt the creation of the Green Investment Bank will help us to change both the way we invest in the green economy and the, t the type of investment that we do. In achieving our goals, I believe the impact will be far-reaching for the economy, for the environment, for jobs and for wider society. The UK Green Investment Bank is the first of its kind in the world, and I am confident that following state aid approval will be in great shape, ready to launch into full operation later this year. We have a big job in front of us, but we relish the challenge. We have the capital, and we will invest it wisely and effectively. Thank you.